I'm so honored to introduce Tara Lytle. She is a native of Clinton, Mississippi. She was hired in 2007 as the first director of Main Street of Clinton. She holds degrees from Mississippi College, a bachelor's degree in interior design, and a master's in public relations. Tara serves on the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, is a graduate of Leadership Clinton, and has served as president of the Arts Council and Junior Civic League. She has been a presenter for Mississippi Main Street Association and is a regular speaker for community clubs and PR classes at Mississippi College. With the help of volunteers, Tara has guided Main Street Clinton to 21 state awards for accomplishment in Main Street districts and has received a personal award for excellence in Main Street. I think that deserves a round of applause. I don't know about y'all. And her wonderful assistant, Ms. Anna Hawk Hawks, is the, is the assistant director of Main Street Clinton and has served the Clinton community for the last six years, bringing interactive placemaking experiences to Old Town Clinton. Anna graduated from Mississippi College with a bachelor's degree in business administration and minors in studio art and music performance. I knew she was talented, I just didn't know, uh, yeah. Anna completed her master's in business administration in 2015. Anna is a board, is a board member for the Arts Council of Clinton, the entertainment coordinator for Mississippi, is that, or Miss? Mississippi Bria, I'd like to know more about that too. Um, and as a graduate of Leadership Clinton, these ladies are very talented. Could you please give them a warm welcome? Well, good morning. We are uh, excited to be here with you today. I'm gonna flip this mic around. We've been told that y'all wanna make sure y'all hear us and it gets recorded. Um, so we're gonna be speaking to you today about non-traditional sources to create an engaged community. And as we present, I think it'll be apparent why we've had to engage a lot of events in our community because we have some other challenges that we face, that a lot of you face, but um, our downtown is very small. We'll, we'll tell you about that. But thank you for that great introduction, Lori. Y'all know who we are. So um, let's see. I want to start with just a community overview so you understand what we look like as a community. We are positioned in Hines County. We are one of the, um, the suburbs of Jackson. Some of our other uh, communities around us, you hear a lot about Madison, Ridgeland, Pearl, Brandon, and Flowood. We are actually to the, uh, the west, moving towards Vicksburg. We um, have about 25,000 population, our median household income. Most of that you can probably read on your own, but uh, we're a very educated community, a little bit above average in uh, degree holders, uh, college degrees, and we are a racially diverse community. We're also the home to Mississippi College. Mississippi College is a, a private liberal arts Baptist college. Their enrollment is around 5,000, about 3,500 on campus. Um, they are adjacent to our downtown. So today we're gonna tell you, um, some of this we'll go through as we uh, proceed through the presentation, but we do have two distinct districts, which is a little unusual for Main Street programs, but we have um, an Old Town District, and then we have a Clinton Boulevard Business District. And we're going to talk a little bit about the economic climate and then our uh, event strategy. This shows you our two districts. We have the Old Town District, which again I said is adjacent to Mississippi College, and then we have the Boulevard Business District, which is contiguous uh, right there. They meet um, on College Street but they're very distinct. This is a word cloud that gives you just a little bit about our Old Town area. Old Town is charming, quaint. There's lots of art projects. It is historic. We have brick streets. We actually have more square feet of brick streets than anywhere else in the state. Um, it is our oldest commercial district. It's a very walkable area. Um, there's a park downtown, decorative lights. You get the idea. We have a, a, reg a regionally famous artist who has a studio downtown. He actually helped us with our program logo. So you get the idea of what um, our Old Town area is like. Our Boulevard Business District, on the other hand, it consists of uh, strip malls, more um, 50s type architecture. It is a little bit tired. Um, it is Parts of it are old Highway 80 that had been um, uh, diverted around in the 70s. 
There are service businesses down there. Um, it is very vehicular, not pedestrian friendly. Um, we have uh, put some murals in that area and some art projects in that area as well. Sorry, I think we're having a sound issue. They're trying to record it and having some issues. I'm going to move it and just turn it in. How is that? Is, is, is that okay? Is that better? Okay. All right. So a little bit about the um, economic climate um, in our downtown area in particular. I told you it's a small area. There's about four square blocks. Um, of those square blocks, we have Jefferson Street as our primary uh, re retail area. And we have had issues with um, property owners, like many of you experience in your downtown. Um, one of our property owners, who at, hold, he did hold um, about a fourth of our property, had an ongoing feud with our city government. And so about six years ago, he, he'd always been challenging to deal with. He kicked out some of the tenants and board basically put papered up his, his buildings. So um, all that played into you know, how we're approaching trying to revitalize our downtown. So um, that has been uh, a challenge that, like I said, I know many of you are, are familiar with that, but it really was critical to our downtown because of the size of our downtown. So we have struggled with recruiting restaurants and retail because there was virtually nowhere to put them. Um, when our program started, we had zero restaurants downtown. We had a coffee shop that did um, some, you know, light food, but no true restaurant. Since our program has been in place, we do have now two restaurants downtown, but not much retail uh, going on. So I think I kind of set the stage. So why we have so many events? Um, we don't neglect the other pro the other committees. We um, have a, a very active design committee that does lots of great projects, and we have a, our economic vitality committee too that does more business support. But our promotions committee has really had to step it up so that we can help establish our downtown as the heart of our community. Um, which we have been doing now for close to 15 years. Um, yeah, basically, I think I've already laid that out as to why we are event heavy. So we're sharing this mic, is that right? Okay. I'm going to kind of hover on this side, I guess, and you jump in whenever uh, you would like. So a lot of these events that I'm going to talk about, Many of you probably do in your community, um, but we just want to talk about some of the ways that maybe we do some non-traditional things um, with these events, and then we'll dig a little bit more later into some of our, our other non-traditional things, so just stay with us as we go. Um, these Old Town Markets, um, they are craft markets. Um, when we started doing these, um, well, it was prior to me, when Tara started doing the Old Town Markets, they really started as... Uh, farmers markets and she was doing them every other Saturday um, and just over time they really evolved more into craft markets than farmers markets um, and over time they went from every other Saturday to the second Saturday of the month um, and then after that we, we over the years have settled into this two in the fall two in the spring um, kind of setup and it has worked really well for us the the markets uh, because there are fewer we get more vendors um, people come and shop more because they know, oh, there's, there's only these two in the spring and these two in the fall, rather than, oh, I'll just go next time, and then they never come. <laughs> um, but you'll see that we have paired uh, all, three of our four markets with a parade. And like I said, we'll we're, we will dig more into those parades a little bit later. Um, but if you don't have a parade in your community, that is one really interesting way that you can engage so many different groups that maybe aren't already engaged. Um, so each, each market has kind of its own theme. So spring into green is uh, kind of a kickoff to spring, kind of Earth Day. Um, we have some vendors that are specific to that theme, but we, we accept any handcrafted item. Uh, May Maker's Market is kind of the same, um, a little bit more maker, cooler. You know, Maker's Market is kind of the cool phrase for craft market now. Um, so we, we hope that May has a few cool vendors. Um, our Fall for Clinton, tons of fall decor at that market. Um, and then Holiday Market, kicking off the shopping season. Um, just some photos from the event. 
during these events, think of every single way that you can get your branding out there. We have some fans that we pass out that have our market dates on them. Uh, we, and that's also a sponsorship opportunity, so engage in some businesses in that. Um, we have balloons that we pass out that have our, our logo on them. And that just, you know, brands that into people's minds that, oh, this event is Main Street Clinton. Main Street Clinton also does all these other things. Um, and so this event is really just helping engage and, and create community with, with all kinds of people, your vendors, your shoppers, um, when you add in those parades, anybody participating in the parade. Um, some other photos. Uh, these are a couple of our parades that I'll touch more on later. Uh, we do a pet parade in the fall and we do our caterpillar parade in the spring um, and they are just some of the highlights of the year. So Old Town After Dark was something that we, we started probably six years ago. Um, and it was an effort to kind of create some nightlife in our community. We are blocks from a private Baptist college. Um, and we, as Tara said, we have very few, at the time, uh, we had very few restaurant and retail. And so, we're, you know, just trying to create some synergy downtown, get younger people downtown. Um, and so we, we came up with this at Old Town After Dark. Um, and it kind of took two, two lanes. So one was this OTAD, Old Town After Dark trivia, and the other was the sidewalk sessions. And um, this trivia night is once a month held at a restaurant um, called 303 Jefferson downtown. And then the sidewalk sessions are, um, we have musicians stay, stationed around our downtown and they play from, you know, six to eight in the evening and people just come, they'll pick up food, they'll go sit and listen to somebody play for a while, they, they'll go somewhere else. Um, as we're going through this, we also want to share some of our our fails. <laughs> um, we are such an event heavy program, we try a ton of things. Some of these things that we'll talk about have been fails and we don't do anymore. Sidewalk sessions is one of those. Um, it just, and another thing that we've learned to do with that, sometimes something doesn't work at one time, but later on in your program, it will work at that time. Um, and so when we tried sidewalk sessions, it just didn't really work. Um, we didn't have the buy-in from the businesses uh, to stay open late. Um, we didn't have a lot of people interested in coming to play, so it's kind of pulling teeth to get that done. Um, and our, our community just didn't embrace it at that time. So we, we are not doing sidewalk sessions anymore. But Old Town After Dark Trivia has been, was and has been and will be a hit. Um, we pack out that restaurant. We do it once a month on the third Thursday. And we pack out the restaurant. Um, some of you may have restaurants in your community that do trivia on their own. Um, and if so, what a blessing. Ours was not. Um, our, our restaurant that has space for that was just not really going out of their way to do anything extra to pull people in. And so we asked them, if we come in and do it, will you let us? And they have seen, uh, they're a little bit grouchy in general <laughs> um, sometimes. Um, and so there have been a few times where we're kind of like, I mean, do you want us to keep doing this? And they're like, oh yes, definitely. Don't stop doing this event. Um, and so we have this guy, his name is David, and he was our first host. Um, and he, we have um, three guys now that kind of rotate, but they, you have to find the right host to really make it work. And David was that host for us. He's charismatic. He kind of picks at people in the audience. And so if this is something that you're interested in, we can surely tell you, you know, details about how we put this event on. Um, but this is helping you engage. I'm going to go to, I'm going to skip a couple and go here. So this group of guys right here, their team name is, I thought this was speed dating. Um, they come almost every time. We have probably six to eight teams that come religiously every week. Um, and if one of their members can't come, somebody fills in. But it has just created this community, but even between these teams that didn't know each other, um, but they know each other as their team name. Um, and then the group here in the middle, um, those are our volunteers. Those are our three guys that host and kind of rotate. And then Allison on the right, does registration and we have all just kind of you know fallen into these roles that we do every time and it had they didn't all know each other prior to this event um but they 
there's a text chain with us and them, and it has just created this little little family, little community. And so then they have gone and gotten their friends involved with some other um, aspect of Main Street. And so it's just so important um, to use these little connections to create community that then expands your reach and builds in, you know, uh, more people in your community. Um, so we have done t-shirts for this event. That's kind of our branding. It's a brain and it's got some, some eyeglasses on. Um, and there are so many inside jokes with that event. Um, and I, they're inside jokes, so it's impossible for me to explain them to you right now. But on the back of the t-shirts, people got like an inside joke um, answer. And so that was so fun. And then I'm going to go up back to this one. So once a year, typically in October, we do Harry Potter trivia. And we started this um, I don't, three or four years ago. And this has, it blew our minds the first time. Um, pe people geek out about Harry Potter so much. And so when we started promoting this Harry Potter trivia event, um, we got tons more teams that were there only for Harry Potter. They don't come to any other event, any other trivia throughout the year, but they come every year to that one. Um, and we have moved, it, it got so big that we had to move it outside um, on our brick streets under the lights. Uh, we, we do all this decoration. We've got our brick wall here, platform nine and three quarters. And people just get so invested in this and they bring their friends and they wanna come and help decorate. Um, and so just these small touches that um, that just make people feel like they're in this experience. Um, and so this, yeah, this is just one of the really fun and honestly pretty easy things that we do uh, monthly. Um, dinner and a movie. Uh, many of you probably show outdoor movies in your community. Um, we purchased a screen and a projector. We are not high tech in the least. Um, I'm sure there are more efficient ways to do to do it, but you see our little table right there with our projector. But you also see behind that a thousand people at a movie. Um, I'll tell you what, what we have learned over the years. Um, kind of early on, we would try a date night movie and a guy's night movie and a girl's night movie and a kid's movie. And we, we do four in the fall, four in the spring. And so we kind of tried that formula. And we learned that the, the movies that people come out for are kids' movies hands down. They're not coming to a date night downtown. They're, we might have 30 people at a date night movie, um, and then we've got a thousand at Frozen. Um, and so if you do these, or if you can apply this mindset to any event, um, think about your movie and what little connections you can make. When we showed The Lion King, we reached out to the Natural Science Museum, and they, they brought some reptiles that the, the kids could look and touch and pet. Um, when we showed Frozen, we had princesses come. We purchased some snow machines that kind of, you know, to make it pretty. What else have we done? I was thinking one reason we do that is because we have to set up about 5.30 and it doesn't get dark like till 7.30 or, you know, 8. And so there's a lot of time and these people start showing up. We're putting up the screen at 5.30 and they're showing up so they can get these close spots. And we had all this dead time. And so we were, that's when mm -hmm. we started programming. Like, okay, we don't always have something, but if we can if we can tie yes. something to a movie. When we saw Star Wars, we had these people yes. dressed up like the mm -hmm. paratroopers or whatever. So. The paratroopers, that's what she said. <laughs> just just so you know, keep that in your mind. The paratroopers <laughs> in Star Wars. <laughs> this is why I do not pick the movies. <laughs> no one would come to the movies. Uh, um, we also, um, so in my bio, which I need to update, <laughs> um, Mississippi Bria, um, she mentioned yeah. Mississippi Bria, we have a professional level soccer team in our community um, and their season starts at the tail end of our, our movie season. And so we did a pep rally for them, like a, a community pep rally. And so that filled some of that downtime that Tara was talking about. And those guys, <coughs> they have probably never been to one of our, our movies, but now they know about our movies. They brought their family and friends to the pep rally who then stayed for the movie and learned about things that are going on downtown. So just all of these different connections that you can make to bring people into your community. Uh, we do a farmer's market. I'm sure many of you do a farmer's market. Um, this, so when our old town markets kind of became craft markets, several years later, we wanted to start an, a new farmer's market. 
And so we started kind of trying to look at when to do that. And Saturday mornings, we learned, just didn't work for our community for a farmer specific market. Um, and after you know some research, <laughs> figuring out what our community wanted and needed, Tuesday nights from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. is what we learned worked for us. Um, we talked to other com communities in our metro area um, and talked to the farmers themselves. And what they really prefer is to go to a different <coughs> farmer's market every day. Um, and so if you have a competing farmer's market in your community, it may be worth talking to that farmer's market and maybe you would both benefit from going on a, a different night. Um, but our farmer's market is a hit. It is huge. We do a big kickoff. Um, people are counting down the days until a farmer's market starts. Um, one of the ways that we kick it off is with a fire versus police cook-off. Um, this, there's a people's choice vote. And so team fire and team police have all their people come to that, that kickoff event. And it, it is just huge. Um, they pass out samples, which we didn't do last year because of COVID, but um, they, they have this rivalry, this camaraderie, kind of throughout the year, there's a trophy that gets presented. And so this is just a really fun way to kick it off um, and to bring people downtown. Um, some other things that we do at our farmer's market, we have a friend of the market program, and it's basically a loyalty program. And uh, this is something pe people do it every year, the same, mostly the same. And then once somebody does it once, they typically stay on it for the next year. But at the, the first several markets, we sell this membership and they get a loyalty card. They get a t-shirt. Um, this is one of ours from one year. It's a cow on the front. It says support your local farmers. And then they typically get some other kind of goodies. There was an apron that year. One year we gave them like an infuser water bottle. We've given vegetable shaped timers, vegetable shaped uh, like peelers, all kind of things. Um, and it costs $25 to be a friend of the market. And you get this little loyalty card. And every other market that you come to, you get, we like hole punch it. Um, and, well, we hole punch it every market that you come to. And every other market, you get a coupon to one of our local businesses for a free cupcake or a free cup of coffee or um, free, kettle free kettle corn. And so we do end up reimbursing those businesses and so they're not out any money, but it is, it is good you know, mojo with your businesses that you're sending people in there and that you're gonna repay them. Um, and some things that we've learned through Friend of the Market that don't work, the infuser water bottle was one. Um, <laughs> we had fresh blueberries on the table every, or fresh fruit on the table every week for them to fill up their infuser, and not one person did it the whole season. And so we won't be buying infuser water bottles again as a gift. <laughs> but people loved the apron. Um, another thing, so if you were in uh, Randy's session yesterday, he talked about uh, ingraining things in the kids, and so it's natural to them as they grow up. And same, same thing about downtown, getting them downtown. If they have a sense of place and know that they belong downtown when they're little, they're gonna feel that same way as they grow up. And so one thing that, that helps them create those memories, um, helps them kind of feel that, that they wanna go downtown is little interactive activities. Throw some pillow hoops on the ground, throw some chalk on the ground, let them color on the ground, uh, while you've got an event going on, it takes up almost no space. It takes no effort and nobody there to man it really. Um, and they have such a blast. Um, live music always helps. Um, we have done vegetable bingo at our farmer's market. Um, they've painted or colored or created some sort of art project, typically vegetable themed if we're doing it at uh, the farmer's market, but um, just getting those kids kind of into it makes the parents want to come back again and again. Um, one other thing I'll mention, the, this photo here, it says baked bean cook-off. So we've tried a couple of different versions of this over the years and haven't found what really works exactly right for us. Um, but we, we did this best of 
for a couple of seasons. And I think four times throughout the season, we invited people to submit their best cobbler sample. And we would have some judges judge all these different cobblers and then award somebody in the community, so not a farmer, not a vendor at the farmer's market, but just somebody that came to the farmer's market, they would be awarded the best blueberry cobbler. We did a, a tomato recipe, so there was like tomato pie and salsa and things like that. I think there was a cornbread, a cornbread one and a sweet tea. It's very Southern. Um, so it just didn't take off. Um, it, it didn't work. We had a few submissions on one of them, and then I think for a couple of them, we didn't have any. And so, you know, just try things. Um, keep in mind that it does take, for, for some of these bigger events like dinner and a movie, don't stop if it doesn't work the first time. Um, that's the kind of thing where you've got to do it over and over and over again to get it into people's minds that you do that. But during your farmer's market, try some different things. Try the best of. Um, try a cook-off. Try, um, we had two of our board members, that's what that photo is, um, where instead of doing best of, we just had a cook-off between them for baked beans. Um, very low effort, especially if, you're, if you have good relationships with your board members. Um, just get them to do a cook-off and make it fun. Um, just lots of little things that you can try within these larger events. We do a Cruz and Clinton car show. Um, we always tell people, Tara and I know nothing about cars. So the, the car club guys, they do all the car stuff and we just promote it. We do logistics and, and promote it. But this is a whole group of people that we don't have access to otherwise. Um, and so when they come to our car show, we've got an announcer that throughout the event is promoting our downtown businesses, um, is promoting our upcoming events. And so uh, we, we are given these people that are kind of outside of our normal community a reason to be downtown and to feel like they belong there. This is an event that I, f that I feel like is exactly what we're supposed to do. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's exactly what we're supposed to do. We, um, we go into, uh, these women register, and we go into one of our downtown businesses, and they put on a presentation or a demonstration. And so basically they're telling, we are, we are telling this group of women what we have to offer downtown. Um, it's a, a ladies day out. We meet for lunch at like 11 typically. And after that we go to the business. Um, Wyatt Waters, who Tara mentioned is a, a regionally known artist. He will do a painting demonstration for us as they eat lunch and they can ask him questions. If you know him, he is just fascinating. Um, he can talk the entire time he paints, and he does. He just monologues for two hours. Um, and so it is fascinating. They did a, a pottery painting class um, in this photo here. Um, and then we toured the college's art gallery there in the middle. And so it is, it is just exactly the Main Street mission. It is literally taking people, putting them in our businesses, and telling them what they can do and what they can get downtown. Um, this is an event that was a huge hit when we started it six-ish years ago. Um, it has slowly dwindled. Um, COVID, this is, they're a vulnerable population, so COVID hit this event pretty hard. Um, so we didn't do it at all last year. Have we done it at all this we year? Won. We did one this year. So um, we will see how that event evolves. Um, we, ha we do have, as Tara mentioned, limited retail and restaurant so you know you can only go and paint pottery so many times or decorate a cookie so many times and so we we're reevaluating this event but it is super it is it i just think it fits our mission so well to show them what we have downtown and this idea actually came from a, a former business owner um, that she had heard some of her retired friends talk about how they wish there was something that they could do together during the day. And so that's kind of how this was born. Santa Claus crawl, so fun. Um, every year we do this holiday promotion and we have a different Santa every year and we put it on a t-shirt. And so people are so excited to get their t-shirt that has the new Santa. Um, so um, just kind of to walk you through this event, um, you register, it's a ticketed event, um, you register for it. 
Um, with your registration, you get a mug. And you don't get a t-shirt, but you can buy a t-shirt if you want. And so our mug has the, that year's Santa on it as well. Um, and you go from business to business, and each business has cider, thus the mug, so you can put your cider in your mug. Um, they have an hors d'oeuvre, and they have a kind of a trivia question. And the intent, the business don't always do it exactly how we want, but the intent is that they have to like look around in the store to find the answer to this question. You know, how many uh, swirls are there on this specific shirt over here? Usually they just say, yeah, register right here. <laughs> um, but you answer the question to register for their door prize. And so we have a car in the past, we've had a horse-drawn carriage that kind of was a, a trolley for them around town. We now have this big land train that our city owns that we use to take them around town. Um, and so it's so fun. Um, you'll see our, some of our mugs there, um, the shirt one year. And then we also, leading up to the event, kind of a week before, we put up this sign that says Santa Stops Here. It just, you know, building its excitement for the event. The kids are like, what does that mean? And so uh, it's just, you know, kind of getting people ready for the event. I'm going to um, jump in and say one thing. Yeah. This was one that came from one of our retailers. It was their mm -hmm. idea. And we were amazed. It's ticketed. It costs $25 to do this event. And basically, they're paying for a few hors d'oeuvres and to shop. And so we're like, Sarah, people are not going to do this. Who's going to pay to shop? We were wrong. They, they do. love it. We uh, really usually have 115, 125, which is about all we can handle at this event. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we're wrong. How do you think, how do y'all know, like, how do you do your mugs? Like, have, like, have you learned how many to order? Like, or do you do yeah. that off the ticketed event? Yeah, we uh, mugs, something like that, you do have to order so far in advance. So we usually, un we order about 150 mugs. Okay. And we sometimes have a few left over, but if we do, we'll give them to the, we'll give them to the retailers who participate. Mm -hmm. Um, this, this event is perfect for a date night. We have tons of like girl groups that come together and they come every single year. And so after you have visited each business, we all gather back together um, and have like heavy orders, so like dinner, and Santa comes and draws for each of the door prizes. Um, and so it is such a fun event. Um, it, a little bit different than kind of, you know, we don't do a lot of ticketed events. Um, but people love it and they, they come back year after year. We had to change it a little bit for COVID. Um, we weren't able to do the big gathering, but we uh, encouraged people to go and shop at the businesses all week instead of just the one night. Um, and if they brought receipts, um, then we, they went into a drawing. They went into a drawing. So, yeah. A so we, we hope to do it back the original way this year. Um, it's a lot more fun and interactive. Um, Homegrown is an event that uh, we tried. It's a farm to table event. Many of you may have tried that. Um, we, it, it was a great success for us. Um, we don't do this event every year. We've done it, I think twice, and we'll do it again in the future. Um, but we worked with our local restaurants. Um, th that far picture on the bottom left is one of our, our restaurateurs uh, serving. Um, we had cards on the table that told where each of the, the food items was from. So two dog farms provided maybe fresh vegetables, uh, live music. Um, that photo there is our mayor. He, he loved this event. Um, and it, it's just another way to kind of create that community to kind of define your district as the heart. Um, you know, when people gather around food, it just, uh, it just creates a community so quickly. Taste of Town, many of you probably do a taste event. Um, ours is uh, the, the standard taste, not COVID taste. Um, the restaurants come and set up a, a tent or a booth. Um, they serve samples. People purchase a ticket to it. Um, we had live music. During COVID, we did a little bit different. It was more like a restaurant week for us. Um, if they uh, went to a restaurant, well, they needed four receipts. If they brought four receipts from restaurants during this specific week, um, then they would be entered to win a door prize. Um, this is a partnership with our chamber. Um, I, I know some of you uh, maybe don't have great relationships with your chamber. We have a great relationship with ours. Um, we work together on several events. And so this is a great way for us to connect with our restaurant community 
um, and kind of extend beyond our normal district borders to engage other people in things that Main Street is doing. This is another event that we partner with our chamber on. This is, uh, like Tara mentioned, Mississippi College is in our district and we do a big welcome back for the students. It's called Back to the Brick. Um, we give away um, sometimes a t-shirt. We gave away a hat this year. We've given away several different things, but um, they, the college brings their, their cafeteria meal downtown. And so the students basically have to come downtown, but they love this event. Um, we have our businesses set up booths all along the street and they, it's not a sales event, but they just um, share information with the college students about what is available in Clinton. Um, there is so much going on at Mississippi College that we often find it hard to get the students downtown. Um, and so this is, this is one really important way that we're able to connect with them to get them to engage um, downtown. I think this may be the, nope, I was gonna say the last thing we partner with the chamber, but it's not. This is another ch chamber partnership. Um, we were each doing kind of a music, a smaller music festival, um, and we decided to join them together for one large music festival. Um, this is held in our downtown. Um, it's a two-day festival. Um, on, we, we hold it on Friday night. We have, um, Friday night's a little bit uh, pared down. We have a, a songwriter round where we have several songwriters that kind of all sing together, and then we have a headliner. And that's about all we do on Friday night. On Saturday, it's packed um, starting at 12. So from 12 to 8, we have a craft market. And it's, we try and make that a good bit different than our, our Old Town craft markets. The, at the music festival, it really needs to be very cool, you know. <laughs> and so we try and recruit very cool vendors for the Red Brick Roads. Um, so we have that going on in the early afternoon. Um, we have a homebrew competition that starts at 3.30. And that, again, is a, a whole slew of people that they are super passionate about homebrew. Um, and to get them into our community and to bring the, not the brewers, but the, the people that drink the homebrew into our community is another, you know, just another community, another group of people that we're bringing into our community, getting them familiar with our downtown. Um, what else do we do? We have a kids area. Great kids area. We have um, artist painting on site. Mm -hmm. um, at <laughs> interactive experiences for the kids. I think you're going to mm -hmm. touch on that in a minute. Yeah. Um, we another fail. We've done a talent show two times, and our oh, yeah. our community is a really a very talented community. We have a show choir that is nationally known. We thought a talent show was just going to you know knock it out of the park. And we struggle with that. We, we did it the year before COVID and we think we had about under 10 participants. And then of course we didn't do anything COVID year. And then this year we brought it back and we had four participants. So that's something we're not gonna do. Just unless there's some champion that's gonna jump in and say how I'll recruit, we're gonna have to cut that. So. Um, art in the park. So uh, Tara will kind of touch on a little bit later our new downtown park. Um, but we do have this great park right next to our downtown. Um, and our city was awarded the Spring Series. It is a tourism grant from the Mississippi Development Authority. Um, if you haven't applied for that before, it is not hard. Apply for that grant. Um, and what we did was create these music and arts weekends in Clinton. Um, there, there were lots of individual events going on in Clinton, but by marketing them all together, we created this Spring Series. Um, some of these events are our Main Street events, some were city department events, some were civic club events, um, some were uh, Mississippi College and Clinton High School are playing music at the park. And so just all these things that we could kind of pair together to create these music and arts weekends, and we were awarded the grant. Um, Art in the Park was one of those. Um, we had artists painting or sculpting on site um, and the community came out and got to engage with them. Um, it was just a really great first time event and we will plan to do that again in the spring. So Tara mentioned our two distinct uh, districts. All of the events that we've talked about up to this point are in Old Town. 
It's, it's just a quaint area. You want to go downtown. It makes sense to do events there. The, the boulevard is a lot harder. Um, really, the space to do an event is a parking lot. Um, and so the, the, the boulevard committee, in trying to figure out how to kind of give this area an identity, this was one of the things that they came up with, a barbecue cook-off. Um, and it, it has had great success. Um, Marikis is the guy on the left. He has come back year after year. We've been doing it, what? This will be our sixth year. Sixth year. He's come back year after year to participate. Um, we tried a cornhole competition for a while. Um, that is another thing that we tried for a few years, and I think we, we won't do that again. The effort that it takes versus the what you get out of it is just not quite worth it um, for us right now. We also have lots of kids' activities, so some, some interactive things for kids like Jenga, some other kind of games and little art projects. Um, but it's just been a really great event to kind of build that district an identity. I think this is the last one that we partner with the chamber on. Um, but this is a bridal <laughs> showcase that we did for the first time in 2020, uh, right before COVID. Um, as we kind of surveyed our downtown businesses, we realized that a lot of them really could contribute to um, the bridal industry. We had a, a business owner, um, she owned a, a formal gown shop and she was getting into uh, wedding attire. Um, and she, it was kind of her idea. She, she came to us and she thought that this would be great. And so we, we partnered with her on this. And we had so many downtown businesses um, and then businesses in our city um, that, that made sense to, to set up at this event. There was a presentation by um, an event planner in our community about how to, how to plan your wedding. And then they, they were set up around our depot, which is where our offices are um, throughout the day. So uh, another great event to engage kind of this, this community that maybe wouldn't normally come to our event. We do some sales promotions. Um, Easter Shop Pop is in the spring. Brick, Brick Street Jingle is at the holiday. Just trying to get people into our businesses. This is not our ultimate fail, <laughs> but um, this is one that we can look at and say, man, we tried and it did not work. Um, so we had this idea for the Mad Hatter Tea Party. It, well, it's called Tea Time Shopping Spree and the Mad Hatter Tea Party. Um, and we had an antique store in our downtown and we thought, oh, they could provide us with the tea sets. And we have, um, or we had a, a children's store downtown. And we thought, oh, they can get some Mad Hatter or Alice in Wonderland accessories to have available. And we have a design shop downtown. And we thought, oh, they can design the invitations and the ad and um, the, you know, whatever else. Well, we did not get buy-in from the businesses. And yet we just chugged on, just <laughs> kept on going. We said, we are doing this event. Um, and so we designed all of this and we purchased this and we found this. Um, and so the event, it was three days, so the 22nd through the 24th of a shopping spree. And they received um, a list of things to find in our businesses. And so they were to go in, once they found it, the business owner would give them a punch. And after they had found everything, they would be entered to win a door prize. Well. A couple of things. Business owners hated it. Because, for one reason, um, they got to keep up with this stamp. They got to uh, know where, whatever it is that they're supposed to find, they got to know where it is. And, you know, it's just too much outside of their normal. Um, the, <laughs> the kids wanted to come do this little scavenger hunt, but that's all they did. They went in, found it, and left. They didn't shop, they didn't look around. Um, she just hit on the main thing it didn't make their cash registers ring. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and so we had these three days of the shopping spree that culminated in the Mad Hatter Tea Party, which look at our great little characters here. Um, we got some of these cookies from the bakery and they did our food. And uh, the teacups in the top that we had hoped to get from our antique store actually came from Tara's house. <laughs> um, and so we learned a hard lesson that day that, and there were, how many tickets did we sell? Twelve, I don't know. Like, not many. <laughs> not many. 
And so we learned a hard lesson that day that if you're if if you're doing something for your businesses and they're not embracing it and and you know putting putting their energies into it, they're they're not going to care what the outcome is because they didn't want to do it in the first place. And so we probably won't be doing this like this again. You know, we'll reevaluate over the years and see if there's a way that we can tweak this to make it work, but it didn't work. All right, you're up. Ooh, I'm worn out. <laughs> okay, well, Anna laid out pretty much everything that we, we do. Um, so you see why this is an important tactic to uh, help in our revitalization process, which it really has helped uh, engage our community. Um, can you move me? Yeah, it's okay. So I'm gonna dig in a little bit about Caterpillar Prey. Caterpillar Prey really is the, probably the second largest thing that we do. And it is um, unique to our community. Um, so we had a caterpillar climber at our Lions Club Park, which is our downtown park, that when Main Street started, this park was sad, sad, sad. But the caterpillar climber, everybody loved it. It's iconic. This was a who's who from the, I don't know, 1970s, we'll say, that had their picture made on the caterpillar climber. Back in the 60s or 70s, they had done a, a float in the parade or an entry in our homecoming parade uh, representing our caterpillar. So, when our, when our promotions committee started, you can put me, in 2007, when we're brainstorming things, what can we do? One of our, uh, one of our team members and um, the chairman of the committee, that, our chairman of our committee at that time was a guy named George Ewing, which I know Jan Miller knows George Ewing. Uh, George Ewing is a character in and of himself. He um, is a landscape architect and he's been fully invested in our program since we started. And he loves a parade and so um, they, they thought, what can we do for Earth Day? We need to do something about Earth Day, something to welcome spring. And just as that conversation went along, they, they thought, what if we do a caterpillar parade? What if we do a caterpillar parade? So 2008, we decided, what does that look like the first year? It's like, well, we will create this caterpillar that looks like a Chinese dragon. We'll gather the kids and we'll just all march behind it. And I'm like, okay, all right. I don't have children, so I didn't know if this was gonna work, but we, we did. One of our advertising businesses downtown actually made the Caterpillar for us, which you're gonna see in just a minute. But so that first year it was super simple. We advertised, come, you know, come walk behind the, the Caterpillar. And we read the Very Hungry Caterpillar. So as it went on year after year, we added things to the parade. The second year we decided we need, our parade needs a queen. And I believe that was a George idea. And so uh, we decided every year we will name a caterpillar queen. And so the, the you know how it is, you got five or six people sitting around the table like, well, how do you get to be caterpillar queen? I'm like, well, okay. Well, first of all, you know, we're not gonna give it to some young cute thing. This needs to be, I'm sorry, this needs to be a mature female because they're not celebrated enough. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna celebrate a mature female who's made contributions to our community. So that's the only criteria we had the first year. And then, um, you know, then you, as you go, well, we don't have a band in our parade. So every year we start adding things, adding a parade, I mean, adding a band. Then we started giving chrysalis away. We thought, okay, we're celebrating spring. So we started giving chrysalis away. And then we had a naming contest. You can see the evolution of what we've done. Added a butterfly cord, added a golf cart floats. Uh, we added a brunch for the queen and her court. Then we yarn bombed downtown and b b added this business decorating contest, which has just boomed. And then the last thing we've added in 2019, we added a crew to Caterpillar. And the crew to Caterpillar is um, actually people who are on our board or who have been on our board. They get to wear this crew t-shirt. And, and then we have a traveling Caterpillar we'll show you in just a minute. So this is Calliope. Calliope was named, what, in about 2013, we had that contest. And so you can't, you'll see other pictures where you can see he's uh, got the head and then it's the sheer body and it's, um, it can be anywhere from 30 to 50 feet, depending on how many people you have that can get under it. Um, so it is just, it's become our thing. I get people calling me and ask me, how do you start a Caterpillar Parade? It's like, well, you need to find something unique you to your community. You don't. <laughs> yes, we're a little territorial. Uh, but find something, <laughs> find something unique to your community and, and do it. Um, so this was, uh, this was fairly early on in the process. Um, this is James Anderson. He is a thespian. He um, does theater at, a, at New Stage and he loves this event. Every year he reads The Very Hungry Caterpillar and he takes it serious. He, ha he puts it on his social media. I believe we grabbed that from his social media you know, that he was reading for us. So that's fun and you can get an idea of, of what we have there. Um, so we, we divide it up in sections. We have walkers, we have 
um, people in wagons, strollers, that kind of thing. And we kind of, you know, uh, we have signs that tell them if you're a walker here, if you're on a bicycle here, golf carts go first. Um, this was from this year. Uh, this lady, I don't know if you can tell, she's on one of those scooters. She has a, her leg is in a cast and um, she's got her children and they're decorated and I mean, they're in costumes and her uh, scooter is all decorated. So um, uh, most of the time, the, ba the bikes are going to have some kind of streamers or something. So they all engage in that. This is a chrysalis giveaway. And so this was actually not my idea about, uh, we all just embraced it. Um, we had, we were working with a marketing company at the time and she was helping us promote it. And she said, have you ever thought about doing this? I was like, well, no, we haven't. So we, we ordered the chrysalis from a place in Louisiana, but um, most of the time they sell to events where they do these mass releases. And so she had never done them for individual like consumption, not consumption, but to individually give away. So we had to come up with a way to give them away. These are cupcake containers. And um, we poke holes in them. And I say we because I, I usually poke the holes in them with this, uh, what's that thing, a wood burner thing. It's very toxic. We have to open all the windows. Um, but <laughs> it's true. And then we engaged a, a life skills class at our high school to actually finish making them. We have to have ribbon tied on them because they, they have this little handle on them and they have to have netting glued in them. So it's a, a multi-step process. We uh, attach a little card that tells you how, like how long it's gonna be a chrysalis, when it should emerge and what you do. So uh, we've had people, this has been going on for a number of years now. We order about, I think 250, we give one per family. And, um, and they're not, it's not an inexpensive thing to do. And so it is a, it's a giveaway, but this is one of those things that now it's starting to become generational. They're expecting their caterpillar. And we've asked them to send us pictures or videos of when they release the caterpillars. And we put some of those up on our social media. So that's a really fun thing that we do. So this is some of the pictures of some of our queens. Um, again, this was, we've probably had about three more queens since this photo. But this photo, the, the gal that's on the, on the left over there, she is Tony Wall. She's the one that came up with the idea for the parade. So she actually was our first queen. Um, the next lady, Jackie Tharp, she is our visitor center director who had retired when we when we awarded her that. Uh, the next lady is the former mayor. And so we let her, she was retired a few years before they named her Caterpillar Queen. This year, Marilyn Hetrick, she and her husband have a business downtown. Uh, Vicki Miscagney, same. She and her husband have a business downtown. And Debbie Tillman, who had several property owners. And she was early on. Her company was the marketing company that actually made the Caterpillar for us. And so this was Teresa, who was the, owned the bakery. And she was uh, just a couple of years ago, 2018, when she was our Caterpillar Queen. Things. The photo on the right, so you'll see that she's wearing this very tacky um, <laughs> crown um, that we just love, and uh, it it stands what that tall, <laughs> um, and it's got butterflies on it and jewels. Uh, we give them a sash. Um, she's got her little butterfly uh, scepter. Is that what that's mm -hmm. called? Um, and then you may, I think you can tell she's sitting on a throne. So we actually were able to partner with our local college. Um, and their one of their leadership classes built this throne, and it's got you know it's got wings and it's got flowers all around it, and it's just, it's regal, it's tacky but regal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they glued. I don't know if you can tell they glued flowers all over it. Anyway, it's fun. And so the butterfly court, um, again, one of those things we added uh, at, through the evolution of the parade. Basically, any little girl that wants to be in the butterfly court can. And so we let them apply. It's usually 25-ish that little girls that are in the parade. We, we give them wings and a sash, and they have their moment. And there's our James Anderson, who teaches them how to do a regal wave and, and then uh, tells about them. So it gives them a, a little... Uh, bio for the little children. Um, this is our golf cart parade. This, uh, we started by encouraging businesses to join in the parade. You know, they'll put their, you know, real estate logos on or whatever. And, but then we just started families that just wanted to, to join in the parade. And so we've started judging it and giving the top two, you know, a prize. And, and some of them are super elaborate, as you can see. Um, I mean, I respect the effort that went into that. Because, I mean, I would love to do that, but I'm not going to go to that much effort. So anyway, it's wonderful. They love it. This is, this is actually um, our golf cart. This was um, when we started, we added a grand marshal. I don't think we put that on there. Because I don't know what year we started doing a grand marshal of the parade. 
But um, the first year it was Wyatt, and he rode his bicycle. Um, anyway, so we do name a grand marshal, and we put them in the, uh, close to the front of the, well, at the front of the golf cart parade, we, we put them. And those are two board members right there, and they're wearing that crew t-shirt. I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, this is Crew to Caterpillar, the last thing we added. This is one of our former queens. Uh, well, there's two of our former queens. There's Jackie that we mentioned, and this is Fran Nixon, and she and her husband have a business downtown. And, and all these ladies have done so much uh, uh, through our revitalization process. These are people, then this is just a way to honor them. But that is the T-shirt that the um, board members and former board members uh, wear in the parade. Okay, business decorating. Um, this is so fun. So I don't remember what that first year was, but we asked people, we were like, okay, the, fir the first of, let's get it up by the first of April and just let people know parade's coming. And our, our downtown businesses, I will say, they knocked it out of the park on this one. They just started, um, I probably Googling or Pinterested, you know, caterpillars. And, and these are some of the caterpillars that we've gotten. The one in the center is one of my favorites. That's an attorney downtown and the caterpillars are in court. I don't know if you can tell that. I couldn't have, I probably couldn't have discerned that if I didn't know what it was. But so that's on their lawn. Um, but anyway, at City Hall puts up a caterpillar. I mean, you get the idea. And then some of our, um, I love the, the planter one down there. That was a new one this, this year. That was brand new. Um, some of our, our homeowners got involved. It's not, you know, I don't have email just with all the homeowners. I've got the businesses. And so I invite them. And after one year, then you start to see some of the neighborhood families that live there decorate along the picket fences. And some of these are businesses too, but some of those are our homes. So we, we just, we love it. Love it, love it. So another thing, we talked about a little bit about neighborhood engagement, some of the families, but these are some of the things that just organically happened. One of our artists did that, our, our traveling caterpillar, he drew it on the sidewalk. Our Kroger, never told them, never would have I thought that Kroger would have put balloons to match our, you know, to support our caterpillar parade. Somebody sent me a picture of them. They're like, oh my gosh, Kroger's got caterpillars, you know. So uh, that's just a fun thing. A big corporation like that has figured out that this is, this is our thing. Um, I don't know if rock hunting is a thing in your community. Anna's gonna talk about rock hunting a little bit, but uh, someone hid this rock and promoted that, and then our bakery had started doing uh, caterpillar cookies. That's our traveling caterpillar. This was actually our mayor's idea. Um, so we bought this fiberglass caterpillar. We sent them pictures of what we wanted and you know, went through the design process. And we've, ha we've had this caterpillar now for about six years and he travels around. But prior to the parade, he will pop up at the schools. We put a sign on him that says, you know, when the caterpillar parade is, join us for the caterpillar parade. And we'll take them around to the different businesses. People started Instagramming it, saw the caterpillar at Fuzzy's Tacos, you know, saw the caterpillar at uh, Funtime Preschool. Um, and we we're just seeing lots. This was actually this year, uh, just love that photo. I couldn't have staged that photo any better. So last year, like many of y'all, COVID hit us hard. We wanted so much to do uh, Caterpillar Parade for our community. Our community wanted us to do Caterpillar Parade, but that just wasn't, you know, in the best interest. So. We started to think, how can we do something? So our businesses did the decorating, and we uh, did two things. We asked people to go around and uh, do social media, post pictures of themselves with the, do, do the caterpillar hunt. Go around, find the caterpillars downtown, post a picture with your caterpillars. And then we also asked them to, um, to do a little a parade at home and video us, and a couple people did that. We didn't have a ton of people do that. But anyway, that's uh, just one way that we tried to keep everybody, you know, it's coming back next year. This, so I told you about our Caterpillar Climber. That park was demolished because we were are getting a development there. We moved that park across the street. It actually opened last year in 2020. That's our Caterpillar Climber. Oops, sorry. We could not use that in, as a playground equipment because it did not meet current codes. And so if we had not figured out something to do with that Caterpillar, I think our community would have revolted. So um, we made him a sculptural element. That is the way you enter the park, and uh, he will be there for many, many years to come. Um, so, touching on the downtown park, this is how we actually were able to use that this year. This is where the parade started from. We did our crowning ceremony on the stage there, and there's, there's Calliope. All right, I'm going to throw it back to Anna. Let her tell you about a couple other folks we did. So, um, that is certainly our most um, popular parade, but we, this is one that we started just this year. We wanted to start it last year, but because of COVID, we weren't able to. And so we held our first Mother's Day parade this year in May. Um, and 
there were kind of two parts to this. Um, for a couple of weeks leading up to the parade, we, we did a contest called A Mother Like No Other. And people would post pictures of their, their mom or their friend that is a mom um, and talk about why that mother deserves to be the mother like no other. And so they, they submitted on social media. They could email it to us. They could submit it on our website. Um, our local newspaper helped us push it out and I maybe accepted some mm -hmm. um, nominations. And then the day of the parade, we would do the parade and then at the end of the parade present the mother like no other. Um, it, we think that this thing has tons of possibilities. Um, we, we think that if it'll just catch on, that this could be, um, you know, an, another Caterpillar Parade situation, we hope. Um, this first year was a first year. We had several participants, um, but we do hope that it, it grows every year. Um, so this is our winner. Um, her name is Doreen McCoy. She had like 18 submissions um, from friends and family. She is over 100 years old in her 90s. She went skydiving. Um, they just talked about all of these adventures that she had been on. Um, and so we were able then, you know, we got all these stories about a mother like no other. And so then we reshared them. And so we were able to kind of share some of her story um, on social media. She was so overwhelmed when she won at the parade and uh, she just cried and cried. And um, we were able to, so the winner uh, got a gift basket from our downtown businesses. Um, so a photo shoot with our, uh, our photography studio, flowers from our downtown florist, a restaurant gift card, tons of other things. And then using our florist, we gave a flower to every mom. And so we, we just think we're really excited about the possibilities of this event um, and want to see how it grows. Um, Pet Parade. We do this with our fall market. Um, we've been doing this for 10 years, maybe. Um, Chick-fil-A is our sponsor, and they're just a perfect sponsor because the cows come and lead the parade. Um, they dress up every year. Um, this photo with the popsicle here, we have a, a downtown popsicle shop, and they did a puppy pop. And so the neighborhood has kind of embraced it. Um, you'll see, we do a, um, a costume contest. Um, after the parade, we present best costume, best trick, biggest pet, and smallest pet. Um, and so you'll see a costume there, um, costume there, and then we, mostly what we have are dogs, but we have had a bird. We have had a sugar glider. That's awesome. <laughs> um, you don't so, I, have, I do have a, a dumb question. Yes. The, do you have a Chick fil A in your community? We do, yes. Okay. yes. Okay. They're not in our downtown district, but in our community. Okay. We do. Mm -hmm. Okay, Cruz and Clinton Car Parade. Um, like we said, we don't know anything about cars. <laughs> um, but this parade, again, helps us connect with um, kind of a, a group of people that we wouldn't normally connect with. And they, before they do the show in our downtown, they parade through town. So they parade through our other district, the Boulevard Business District, um, and then through some of the neighborhoods. And so uh, just kind of, you know, connecting our community back again through this parade um we have a grand marshal this year our grand marshal is cindy hyde smith um but we try and have a, a grand marshal that is known that can help us uh, promote the parade anything you'll say about that um so this is not an event but it is something new that we have somewhat new that we've done that we wanted to share um if you've heard of a parklet um it's basically taking up a parking spot and doing something interactive there. Lots of restaurants use parklets um, for outdoor dining, um, but they, there are tons of uses for parklets. People have done little putt-putt uh, courses, it's a very small course. Um, but what we've done is it's called the Corner Hangout, and it's just a few um, parking spaces in our downtown where we try and get people to come and just spend time. Again, trying to, to get them downtown, or if they're already downtown, to, to spend a little more time there, just to, um, to create some memories there. There's cornhole, there's a couple of uh, Connect Four, we there's a couple of ring, other games. Yeah, um, so, 
simple way to to engage people in your downtown. Does that stay up all the time? Um, it, 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 it can be temporary. Since we've put it up, it has stayed out, um, which has been six months? About six months, yeah. Um, but it was our intention to take it up for our music festival, which we ended up not needing to. And, um, you know, as, as we get some businesses in, yes? As we get some businesses in those buildings right behind that space, we will we will move that elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I love that, um, and I, I know certain communities do like to hang the outside, like mm -hmm. the giant checkerboards and stuff. And I mean, I think our community is great. I just think, what if someone wants to steal? I mean, we don't have a crime problem. Uh huh. I mean, something sitting out. You know, you sure. Don't know, so like. We, we don't. We don't. It's been out here six months and nothing has disappeared. I mean, we don't have a crime problem. That's not to say that, that someone might not want that sometimes. That's one reason we put our name on it. So that's, uh, those are some, uh, they're pretty expensive boards because we could get them logoed. So maybe they'd be shamed if they showed up at their house. I mean, I don't know. I just try and believe in the goodness of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. We just had, that would like say. We had a, we had a, but you know, I, I love this. I'm just worried about. Right, mm -hmm. right. It is right around the corner from our police department. I mean, they can't see it. They can't see it, but it is right around the corner. Um, so anyway. And I want to say like, we have crime in our community and recently a friend of ours had her laptop stolen, but they were able to find it because of all the stickers that she had on it. So I feel like that, I mean, they can't take that off, you know? So I feel like the more logo and more things you would put on it, yeah. the, the less likely they would want it or that it would be easily identified if it was stolen. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Okay. So Red Brick Roads is the music festival that we talked about. Um, so I kind of gave you an overview earlier, but I want to talk about some of the interactive um, things that we have going on at that event. Um, I think Randy, if you were in his session, even mentioned something like this yesterday. We put out these boards, and we have, we've done that for, for a couple of events, and I'll tell you, you can do that on actual like plywood pieces, or we have used insulation board um, that is super cheap. And so we just paint it um, white, and then we use a projector and project a design on and do the black outline, and then just let the kids fill it in. Um, Randy's example, they did a paint by number. We don't really do, you know, we don't number it. We just let them come and put on it what they want. Um, but the, that, that Sharpie design that's already on there kind of helps give them some, some direction. Um, but we've used that at so many events. It's such a fun, easy, interactive way to get the kids involved. Yes? It's a marker lot. What do you let the kids use? Oh, uh, paint. Here's Real paint. paint. Mm -hmm. We do. Um, so we do that at that event. Um, we have some other hands-on kids activities. They build um, a little maraca. They build a mask. Um, they, we had an a interactive weaving wall this year um, that I don't have a picture of, but just, any, just think of so many things that you can get somebody to put their hands on something that then stays there and somebody else can come in and put their hands on. About the board that they're mm -hmm. right there, did y'all y'all design that or mm -hmm. had an artist to do that? It's probably a design that, that was we found on the design. internet. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Um, and honestly, you could probably just do some swirls on there. Mm -hmm. What? Right. How? Willy nilly. Yeah. This year we did circles. Mm -hmm. It was just all these different circles yeah. they filled in. I love um, that. Mm -hmm. But just this interactive thing that people come up, they interact with it, and then when they come back to it, somebody else has interacted with it, so it's. It's this tapestry of everybody that's there. And it's just this piece that is a, a lasting memory. And we, we have kept many of those, those painted pieces and displayed them at, at different events. Um, we also occasionally <coughs> paint over them <laughs> and use them again. Um, and so it's super easy and a, and a great way to, to get the kids involved. Um, this mural in our downtown, we had wanted for a while to um, have kind of a, you know, that, uh, What's that called? 
postcards, postcard. kind mm -hmm. of a postcard of our community selfie spot. Um, and we connected with an artist who submitted a design and this was it. Um, and she painted this mural on site during our event. And so if you are able to have artists on site, you may not be able to do a full mural, but artists on site doing something is such a, a great way. Um, again, if you were in Randy's session where he talked about art, um, not everybody knows what to do with art. Um, they don't know how to interact with it, but if you've got a, a person there doing their art and they can have a conversation with them and see what they're doing, then they then feel part of that artwork. Um, and so we loved having her on site at Red Brick Roads doing this mural. So rock hunting, who has rock hunting in their community? Anybody? It is the craziest thing. <laughs> it started really for our community a year or two, I guess, before COVID, mm -hmm. but it really picked up during COVID. And it's like a year round Easter egg hunt. So people paint rocks and then they hide them somewhere in the community. And if you find a rock, then you can hide it somewhere else, or you can keep it and then put another rock that you paint somewhere. And um, it, it has just blown up in our community. <laughs> um, but we have kind of tried to embrace it to promote our events. And so we put our logo on some rocks and hit them around town and sent some tips on our social media. And if people found the rocks, they got a free ticket to the event. Um, so it cost us next to nothing um, and if they came to the event and bought beer, it was a win-win. Um, the Caterpillar Rock, so our offices are at our depot in town, um, and the depot hosts several days leading up to the Caterpillar Parade. They host several days of rock painting, and so they'll provide rocks and paint, and people can come in and paint them. And then the, the hope is that people are painting caterpillars, but, you know, they'll paint whatever but just trying to build some excitement towards Caterpillar Parade and get them to hide on downtown for the event. Um, this is another of our boulevard events. Um, just trying to define that area again. And this Spirit Night has been a great way to do that. Um, we have our, our high school on the night before their big rivalry with Madison Central. Um, we have a community-wide pep rally in our Boulevard Business District. Um, you'll see our, our fire department has a, a truck there and a, and a arrow. Our, we are the Clinton Arrows. They have an Arrows flag hanging from the fire truck. Our, um, the coaches and the cheerleaders, they ride in, they cruise in on antique and vintage cars um, to the event. Our football team is there. The marching band is there. Um, sometimes Attaché, which is our show choir, is there. And so we just lots of, um, you know, stand cheers, and the, the cheerleaders do a cheer, and um, the coaches get up and rile everybody up. And so it's just such a fun way to connect with our school district. Um, our community is very, very passionate about our schools and very, very supportive of our schools. And so this is a way that we can kind of merge our mission and with, with the schools. Um, and bring our community into this district that we are trying to help develop an identity. Um, so this is our logo on the left. Um, Wyatt Waters did our logo and he included a bike. Um, and you know, bikes kind of bring up uh, nostalgia. Um, and so we have tried to use that, that bike branding in our Old Town district. Um, and so, when a new business opens, we give them this little metal bike that has our logo on it as kind of a welcome gift. We have these bikes for rent at our office at the depot. Um, they're just cruiser style bikes that we purchased. Um, people can uh, come in, leave their ID, sign a waiver, and then they can take our bikes around downtown. Um, we don't have many, uh, we don't really have bike lanes or biking trails, and so what, and there's a huge hill this way from the depot and not this way and so what happens is people get our bikes and they go downtown they go not the big hill um and they they ride the bike through our downtown the brick streets um and the neighborhoods there and these are they're free to rent we don't charge <laughs> to rent the bikes um and then another way we use the bikes are um the bikes of old town and they're um it's a public art project and we have these all over town um, different artists submit an idea for what they want to do with their bike. 
um, we can provide a bike or if they have one that they want to use they can use that one um, the one here on the left is in front of our depot so it has some some train uh, spike details on it um, we have a cat problem <laughs> in Old Town I don't know if any of you do um, but cats are everywhere and so we have a cat bike um, and that that is a children's bike so that's only about that big so the cat's only about this big <laughs> Um, and then this is a caterpillar bike um, and you can see that she's put a couple of bikes together and the feet are kind of at the bottom where the, the pedals are and this caterpillar has huge lips <laughs> I don't know if you can see it but um, so just one way to kind of brand our area with bikes and get people um, in our downtown um, hopefully on bikes one more thing I'll add mm -hmm. about that. We've been doing the bike program for about seven or eight years now, and these are three that were added this spring. So those, those are three of our newer bikes. Um, Lions Club Park that Tara mentioned, we, if, <coughs> it's something that we can use in our community to our advantage. Um, we, I'm so sorry about the sneeze. Um, so this photo is people gathered at the park um, and I'm not even sure exactly what event that is from, but some of the things that we've helped facilitate um, at our park, um, our college, Mississippi College, their band performs there, their theater program has put on a production there, our high school put on a theater production, our high school had a band performance, um, Hines Community College had a band performance there. Um, what else? Lot, lots and lots of things have been going on at that park. Um, and so we're trying to help that become, it, it is part of our downtown and just, you know, drawing people there. Head in the whole interactive way. You can repaint those, do them seasonally. We have just a couple more minutes. Okay. <laughs> um, connect with as many people as you can. Uh, your city departments, your local jazz group, um, your local theater group. Hope for better days. This is a, um, a COVID promotion that we did, encouraging people to decorate with rainbows and then encouraging people to go out and take pictures of all the rainbows that they found. Um, this was a picture of First Baptist Church. They did this beautiful balloon arch on their front step. Um, there are a few more. Just, you know, trying, hope for better days, trying to give people something to do downtown. The one on the left, our pizza slices, because that's our pizza place. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna throw it back to you. Oh, is that the last one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, just a few of the outcomes that we wanted to touch on. I think that uh, through our events, we've really been able to firmly establish our, our really our Old Town District is the heart of the community. Um, it has really become a vibrant spot. Um, it is the go-to spot. We, we have one of our board members early on said that on Jefferson Street, there was nothing going on. You could literally shoot a cannon any time of day and not hit anybody. Well, that is absolutely not the case. Um, when we have Old Town After Dark trivia, I mean, the place is packed out. Um, and, we're, and we've seen, you know, it is the spot for prom photos and engagement photos and that kind of thing. So we know that we know the program is working. Um, the Boulevard District is now, it's a more attractive place to do business. Um, we think the events have helped it to start to, to build an identity. And then finally, I wanna tell you one of our really positive, um, I think we had a role in, but um, it really, city, city has been proactive. Um, you know, we talked about how we had these Jefferson Street properties that were just locked down. Um, well, our city, two of the properties um, were, in uh, condemned, the city condemned them, and then they used eminent domain to, to take the properties. And the properties were in litigation. Obviously, the owner fought that for three years, and we the city won those properties and were able to resell it to a private investor. And those are be in the middle of being uh, revitalized right now, um, renovated with uh, the stipulation from the city was that we wanted it to be income to tax producing. And so the owner is going to be putting a restaurant there. So we, we have two. So hopefully in the next year or so, we'll have three. And then as another outcome from that, the Jefferson Street properties that you could see in some of the background of these great photos with, that were, that were uh, papered up, um, the, because of the pressure from the city to maintain those, he has recently sold those properties. As of September 1st, those are in new ownership. And we've already got a restaurant looking at one of those and a couple other retail businesses. So we're excited. We're, we're, we're thrilled that some of the things that we've done has helped shine a light on our downtown and, 
and really make it a place that people want to be and engage in. We thank y'all for your time.